Started by the town, but we on the scene We Texas finest, so you know we staying clean Do you really wanna with me? I'm burning up on the low, low The king of the city, we're slaying up in the limelight And we be shining, we be shining, we be grinding, we be grinding We them big money, get up So with Hammer Down, uh, we're gonna do some, some oops, do some drop of pliers on a dog, but we're gonna do some work to a hot plate. Okay, the little burners that you know we buy, it's truck drivers. It's about an 800 watt or a thousand watt. I can't remember. It's a thousand watt burner. Um, the only problem with these is, is even on max, they have a thermostat. And it causes it to shut down well before your skillet gets as hot as you want your skillet. Or if you're going to use cast iron, you know, y y your, um, your hot plate gets hot, but your skillet don't. Or it gets hot, but not hot enough, you see what I'm saying? So a little bypassing of the thermostat here so on the ten dollar hot plate from Walmart which is what I'm using as a demonstration here you got one nut on the bottom you got to remove that's all you got folks okay Alright, so your thermostat is right here. Okay, so once it gets hot, there's something in here that that acts and it shuts it back down, which is what you don't want it to do. Alright, so basically what you're gonna want to do is so here's all the wires you're working with. So that's coming directly from the cord itself. This comes over here and it splits and your negative goes over to here. Or I mean your neutral whatever, negative neutral. Goes over to this side and it runs over here to this light. That's all that, that is right there is your little light that glows to let you know that your unit is actually hot. Okay. Now um, these right here, this is your whole little thermostat setup, okay? I'm not 100% sure exactly how it works, but I know that all we're going to do is we're going to take and we're going to, we're just going to directly connect these two wires right here. And uh, I've been known, I've put it on a switch before. Um, and I might see if I have a switch laying around in here that I can put it on. Let me actually check for that first. Well, after a quick delay, I went in and bought a switch. It'll work perfect. It'll be a little bulky, but <clears throat> there's plenty of room for this shit to fit, so I don't care. So I drilled a hole. That way I can put my switch guy down in there. It'll fit just fine. I went ahead and I disconnected this little switch right here which has your thermostat built in. And you see I already got my wires ready to hook up to the switch. That one and this one. See how they got like the curve on them? They'll hook up nicely with the with the switch itself on the on the poles there. So I'll be right back. This is where I put the, the switch in at. That's that hole that I drilled. My drill but wasn't quite perfect so I had to do a little finesse. But it's in there. And so you, this middle post is the one that, you know, this is the one that goes to the actual coils. This bottom post right here is the one that came from the plug that goes to your, your, your inverter, your wall plug, whatever your, your uh, setup is. So that's the off position when it's this way. So this is the hot wire that come in, this is the hot wire that comes out. And it runs directly to your coil here. 
test run. You see I got my switch here in the off position. It's hard to read it, but it does say off right there. Right there, you see it? Off. So when I flip my switch, my light still comes on because I left the light connected. That way you don't forget that your hot plate's on and you walk off and leave it. I always make sure I leave the light connected. See, so now this does nothing. This knob is absolutely useless. I leave it there for the looks though. But right here, it's on. And now what this does is it allows your coil to go wide open at max watts and it just stays there. Instead of it reaching a certain temperature and then the thermostat telling it to shut off. Now you can use cast iron skillets, you can use uh, bigger pots, you can use like, uh, you know, you can make all sorts of different shit now because it doesn't shut off. It will actually cook at a high temperature instead of being limited to a lower temperature. This takes about 30 minutes of your time and uh, makes all the difference in the world. This little uh, guy right here, like I said, I think in a previous segment of the video, was $6.47 at the truck stop. You can go to Walmart and get one for about $3. But I wanted to do the video, and so I went inside and I bought it. The skillet warming up. We got the bacon thawed out, pulling it apart so I can lay the strips in. And we're going to cook this bacon up, and then I'm going to cook my three T-bone steaks in the bacon grease. This be some damn good shit right here, boy. This be the test run. See, there's the switch. He's in the on position. The light is glowing. And this motherfucker will seriously get hot now. There's no games when you do that. That is the real shit right there. Real fucking deal. You like that? I'm drinking milk. Water challenge or not, I wanted some milk. I've had a bad day. Got the bacon going. That's just the round one. And get the pan good and greased up. Shit's cooking really well. It's not gonna get, uh, the hot plate will no longer get hot and shut off. It will stay running at its full watts until you flip that switch. Two of the bacon here. We already got some bacon over there. I got lost track of time, but whatever. Just chilling with it, man. It's just gonna be good. I got one piece of bacon left. I'm kind of pissed off that I didn't make it into the skillet, but it's all right, you know. We're getting after it. Up to the T-bones, folks. Cooking the T-bones in the bacon grease. Might not be the healthiest meal on the planet, but it is my meal. That's what greatness looks like, folks. That's what greatness looks like. You got the little switch, got that shit. That is fucking, that is the shit, folks.